حمده عدد خلق ورضا نفسه وزنة عرشه ومداد كلماته اللهم صلي على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل قدة من لساني يقف قولي اللهم مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا على طاعتك Oh Allah, the one who turns the hearts, turn our hearts towards your obedience. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope everyone is doing wonderful. Marhaba, welcome to class. Uh, just a little recap, we were doing one of the diseases of the hearts uh, and one of them was ingratitude. We learned how ingratitude is dangerous. Uh, for uh, the human psyche, how it is uh, bad for us in the dunya and what are the consequences in the akhira. Then we discussed that if we remove this because we're doing the process of purification and tazkiya, how this happens is, is when you remove something, a disease from your heart, you have to replace it with something beautiful. And that beautiful thing is gratitude. And this is what we were talking about. We looked at some examples, but now we're going on to the practicality of it is how to be grateful and show it. And in the last class, we talked about how Allah is a shakir and a shakur. And we, when we learn about the beautiful sifa, the beautiful attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we want to imitate those and we want to be like that. So how can we be a shakir, a shakur? Uh, we will come to that again. Then we talked about the hadith and sunnah. We talked about how important it is to have models of excellence and what is a model of excellence. And today we're going to be doing something very interesting, uh, which I thought, uh, which I personally thought was very interesting is the science of gratitude versus the Mumin lifestyle. Okay. Now, what is the science of gratitude? The science, the gratitude is such an amazing, amazing uh, emotion or thought or whatever you call it, is such an important part of our human psyche that there is a whole science about. We actually have people called happiness counselors. And the, and the job of these people is to teach people how to be happy, how to stay happy. They do this as a profession. And how do they do that is they teach you gratitude. Okay? They teach you gratitude and uh, science shows that there are many advantages of gratitude and some of them, I will list these down and this is what uh, science says. So I'm sure most of us have experienced this in parts that when we are grateful to Allah, we feel that there is a greater sense of uh, general well-being. You feel you do have greater resistance, uh, resilience towards your problems. You feel uh, that you have less stress and less depression. Your dependency on pills and antidepressants goes down. Your sleep becomes better. Your blood pressure is reduced. And you have increased serotonin and dopamine, which are the two feel-good chemicals. It impacts the mood. It gives you better willpower and uh, motivation. There is less exhaustion. There is You have fewer sick, sick days. You have greater job satisfaction. And, you know, gratitude builds neuron paths within you. Also, if, I mean, the, the list goes on. So this was just few of the things that one feels when they are in a state of gratitude. Also, if I was to ask you, what is one of the most wanted things that human beings wish for in the dunya and even the akhara? What is it? Happiness, peace, stress-free life, anxiety-free dunya. Um, and all these can be achieved by this powerful tool called gratitude, right? So, and gratitude, let me tell you, starts with the smaller things in life. People who cannot appreciate the smaller things in life will not be able to so show gratitude on the bigger things in life. So it starts with the small, small things, and then you are able to appreciate the bigger things in life. What does, what do, uh, what does science say if you look at any of these books? There is huge, there's lots of success in literature written on gratitude. They, one of the most popular ones is you wake up in the morning, every morning that you wake up, and you write down five things that you are grateful for, right? So 
that is a very nice way because when you wake up in the morning and when you are thinking of the five things that you are grateful for, what are you doing to your psyche? You're putting yourself in a positive state, right? And what you not have not have. Remember what we said about the thing is the thing about gratitude is focusing on what you have rather than focusing on what you don't have. And what are we doing as as children, as teenagers? As in any any age of your life, what are we doing? We're generally focusing on what we don't have, what we could have, what we have missed out, or what we want. But it's we've just forgotten like living in the present and what we have. We're not enjoying what we have. We're just focusing on ye karna hai, bachche ko us college jana hai, ye karna hai, and this and this and this and this and every stage of our life, we're just looking to another. And we're missing out on the beauty of the present. So the five things I was talking about. But if we now compare this to what Allah has told us about the Muslim lifestyle. When you wake up in the morning, what is the first thing you do when you open your eyes? What is the sunnah way? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. This generally means that uh, I thank Allah for giving me life after death. And to him, I will return. What life and death? I just woke up. So your sleep and your death are like sisters. When you wake up in the morning, this is actually a realization that there is a sunshine to the dark night that has passed by. It is a new day. It is a new opportunity. You just got a new life today. So whatever happened yesterday, you have a new opportunity to it. And Allah ka shukar that you're above ground, that you are able to solve your issues or problems or whatever it is that you're suffering, Allah has given you another day. Because if your eyes were to open in the grave, there would be no going back. There would be no saying sorry to the people you wanted to say, or there would be no solving issues. It's over. There would be no toba. So this is uh, the positive note. Then when we go, and we go to the washroom, we come out, and we read our fajr prayers. That's what we do, the first thing we do in the morning. So what do we start our prayers with? How? What is the first lesson taught by Quran to us? The first very lesson, the first thing that we read in the Quran, Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Surah Fatiha, how many times do we read it? This is a, imagine we're just starting our day, starting our fajr with words of shukr, full tarif, sab tarif Allah ke liye hai, right? Sab hamd Allah ke liye hai. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to every ayat that you read in Surah Fatih. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to it. Then when you finish your prayer, what do we read? Tasbih, right? Usme kya aata We read 33 times, alhamdulillah. So, I mean, forget the five times of gratitude. We're doing it 33 times after every namaz. So, one beautiful thing that we can do, because usually in the morning, like, we're like, alhamdulillah, 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 was 33 times, jaldi se ginti khatam karni hoti, right? So, what we can do is actually consciously, while we're just going really fast on it, just think of just mental note of all the things that you have, you know, the Allah has given us eyes and ears, your, your feet are moving, you're able to go, your kids are okay in the morning, your house is okay, everything is fine, you have the health, you're breathing. So, as you're reading the 33 times, Alhamdulillah, maybe in your surroundings, it's you're comfortable. So, all these things, you know, what are you doing? Ek to hota, you're doing tasbih you are going to get the ajar for it. But if you want the psychological and therapeutic effects of the tasbih that it was meant to be, then you do it with awareness. Then you do it with mindful tasbih and you bring your heart and your soul, you feel it in your flesh and your blood. And this is when you get out of the namaz, you feel so relaxed. This was the purpose of namaz. So when we are putting the conscious mind and purpose and thinking, then we are able to actually get this positivity in us. And jab hum namaz pad lete hain, then what is the dua that Huzur sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught Hazrat Muaz, uh, someone he really loved. Rabbi aynni ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadat. Never leave this dua. Again, what is this, what is the importance of this dua that we are asking Allah's help over the zikr that we do, 
over the shukr that we do and the husni ibadak and the beautiful worship that we do. So coming to realize that even thanking Allah is a nemat and it is not something that comes by, just comes to you. This is also a blessing that we are able to thank Allah for his blessings. The realization that we are able to thank Allah is also a blessing, right? So not everyone has this gift. Because you see, let me tell you, happiness does not come with things. Happiness does not come to you with things. Happiness is a mindset. It is a thought process, right? And it just, uh, you have to be in that mindset. Then after that, when we drink water, after we say Bismillah, what do we say after we drink water? We say Alhamdulillah. Did you know that uh, water uh, understands language and it can hear you? There was an experiment, it's very famous. You put one glass of water and you speak bad to it and one glass of water and you uh, speak good to it and then it turns bad before the one that you... There is an experiment, I'm sure you can find it on YouTube. Yes, and I actually attended these workshops where we studied the whole uh, crystal of water and what the mechanisms and the molecules and then they did this experiment and how the crystals and the molecules of water change. So how... So what we are doing is we are actually, when we are when we are saying Alhamdulillah, the water can hear us. I mean, if this is just my, uh, this is just how I thought my deen is so beautiful that hum jab apne paani se, we don't have to always tell the water you are so nice and you are now I'm going to drink you. So we just go Alhamdulillah, if they say the water can hear, then we are all already drinking it and the water is feeling positive and we feel positive. You are drinking good water, healthy, beneficial water. That will affect your psyche, right? When we eat food, yes, this was science. So, but I'm just saying, I the the what I'm doing is is the science of gratitude and the moment lifestyle. So I'm just connecting the two. That what we are doing, abhi science bichare after 1400 years, they have discovered all these things which we as Muslims have been doing for centuries now. But we didn't know the effects, right? We just feel that, oh, bas salam, alhamdulillah, pad rahe hain, Allah ko, Allah ka shukar ada kar rahe But yes, these are, we are getting ajar. But with that, we are also doing a lot of other things that we don't, there, these are the many, 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 many benefits that we don't even know about. That science is gradually unfolding now for us, right? It's not being called Islam Um, Actually, uh, uh, as we, it was now, Islam evolves, right? So in those times, there was, if you told the Sahaba such a thing, then it would not have made sense. But now we have science, we have the knowledge of molecules, we have the knowledge, and we know that the sun, the sun, all the things are going on. The sun, the the sun takes permission from Allah every time it rises. So we know that the creation of Allah uh, listens to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So this was, this is not something, I just mentioned this for us to feel what we are doing and feel a connection with our deen and Islam and how beautiful it is. Because every time I read something that science has discovered, it's usually like, oh, mere deen mein it's already there. And you know, it's so beautiful. I feel more appreciative. The, you know, the blessing that I feel so blessed being a Muslim. So it's just uh, one thing added on another. It's like icing on the cake. That was my only reason to mention it. So when we go to the bazaar, we talked about the dua, we thank Allah. So I'm just now telling you that how in our lifestyle, Hamara jo, you know, our shukar guzari is within a moment lifestyle. We are constantly living in that positive mindset if we are doing things consciously. And we are not doing it like a parent. That we have just memorized things and we're just doing it because it was taught to us by our mom or daddy or someone. And then um, after that, these are some of the lifestyles that we do. But these are all the things when things are going hunky dolly and we are very happy. But what if something happens that goes against your will and something that you don't like? Remember the last time someone asked restriction and I said, when well, something happens that you don't like and it's it's you're not happy about. You don't feel like doing it. How will you ask for khair? But you're feeling you you you're not feeling that this is this is this has any khair in it. Remember, we talked about the words inna lillahi wa inna 
and we talked about the dua and I sent it on the group. By the way, I hope the online and the on-site students are getting the slides now. Okay, can I get a hands up for those who have not received them as yet? Okay, good. Alhamdulillah. So everyone's received them. So, and there are other words that uh, we learn from the sunnah that Huzur Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam maybe hame sikhaya. And uh, we have been taught by the Sahaba. Some of the uh, words are uh, that we know from the Sunnah is Raditu Billahi Rabban wa Bil Islam Deen and Muhammad al Nabiya Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is an acceptance that I am Razi. I am accepting. I am in a state of gratitude. Okay. And then we, if something goes wrong, you, you say, Qadr Allahu ma sha'afala, which means that Qadr Allah Ta'ala ne bokiya whatever Allah had willed. So although this is, seems like I don't like this and it, it doesn't make sense to me and I don't know where this is going, but still you have faith and your heart is not in a state of na shukri. You are saying that you are not happy with this, whatever it is, and you want it to change, but you are not in a state of complaint. You are not, and this only Allah knows. And thank, and I was just thinking, Ki, Subhan Allah, thank, I thank Allah for that, that if you are feeling this, it's very hard for me to explain to someone when I'm crying and I'm sad and I'm upset, and people are saying, sabar karu, sabar karu. And, you know, for, for me to tell them that, yes, I'm sabar to kar rahi hu, but still I feel the hurt, but I'm not, my, my heart is not a state of, in a state of complaint. I'm not upset with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but my heart just hurts about what happened. So do you understand when the heart is grateful, but it's still sad at the same time, and it does dua to, to Allah, accepting that Allah did what he will, but you would wish for it to get better for you. This is the state of gratefulness. Uh, blaming comes of yes, and the words are, Alhamdulillahi ala kulli hal. Alhamdulillah, over whatever state Allah has kept me. That is a statement that will say that I am... Pleased with what el, uh, whatever Allah has state, uh, Allah has put me, and this is a huge uh, psychological. Uh, you know, it it just removes a lot of your uh, worries and uh, you know remorse or hurt or regret, whatever that happens. When you say these words, then it takes a lot of that blame off of you. You are just accepting of what has happened, and then Allah rewards you because what had to happen happened. Right. So apart from the worldly benefits that we are talking about, all the psyche and everything, Allah has also put ajr for the akhira. And Allah says that, that there are eternal benefits of people who are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in Surah Nisa that what is Allah going to do by giving you punishment if you are, if you do shukr and you believe. Ma yaf'alullahu bi azabikum in shakartum amantum. So Allah says, Allah to shakir hai, bohat appreciative and he's all knowing. So this is a great advantage. You want to stay away from punishment? You want to stay away from Allah's uh, wrath? You keep doing shukar. But what if something happens and, and you've been doing all the shukar all this while and still things happen that are not in your favor? Question mark. What does that mean? Is that a punishment? I yeah, I gave the answer in the last class that if a situation happens to you, but if it takes you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala into doing wrong, then maybe that was a punishment. But if something, but if that brings you to reading these duas and brings you closer to Allah and up Allah ki farma bardari pehi rehte, so it was a test to increase your levels to maybe uh, elevate you of your sins, to bring you closer to Allah, to maybe uh, teach you something that you didn't know, to open your eyes to something that you were oblivious of, and many other reasons. Allah says, in shakar, eh, anishkuru Allah says that if you are grateful to Allah, Allah will be pleased. So easy. We think that we have to do so many things, so many umrah, so many tahajjud, so many things to please Allah. Allah says, just be grateful and you will get Allah's pleasure. That's how easy it is. Okay, then also Allah says that Inna Allah nas, nasi la which means that 
बेशक इंडीड अल्लाह इज द वन हु डज अ लॉर्ड ऑफ फेवर्स ऑन द स्लेव बट देर आर वेरी फ्यू दैट आर थैंकफुल सो वॉट डू वी प्रे दैट ओ अल्लाह मेक अस ऑफ द very few how many people are there in this class today very few there will always be very few people who are on the right path you will always find very few people who are doing the right thing you will find very few people who are in a state of gratitude so this is good news for me and you so celebrate if you find the majority doing something know that it's generally not the right thing people doing the right thing and this is generally the case are always very few so we need to pray to allah that oh allah make us of the few right so and also one other thing is akhira mein allah subhana says that he will ask you for all that he has blessed you another reason to be grateful is that allah says that huzur sallallahu alaihi wasallam was presented with dates and cold water and uh, he said i'm not quoting the exact words that you will be questions questioned even about your cold water and the date that you had imagine so are we question mark are we really thanking allah for all the blessings that we unwrap every day we are not we have so much to thank him for so when you have so much to thank him for when you are so immersed like you know like into just a shahar mein dhoop dhoobe mein aao allah ki nematon mein do we have time to complain do we have time to be uh, negative we don't right uh, and also one big uh, reward for saying alhamdulillah that allah says that it will fill the mizan do you know the size of the mizan it is said that the size of the mizan if the heavens and the earth were to put put in it it would fill it it would they would be fitting in that mizan and the words of, of alhamdulillah they fill the mizan right and the mizan is actually the scale of weighing deeds at the day of qiyam so uh, i mean this is a huge incentive for us to say to hum kehte na alhamdulillah 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 do we say kadi times एक होता है कि यू आर रियली फीलिंग इट इन दैट मोमेंट एंड दैट वन वन अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह कुड बी योर रोड कुड बी योर गेट कुड बी योर डोर टू पैराडाइज एंड गेनिंग अल्लाह प्लेजर सो नेवर एंड अंडर एस्टिमेट एनी गुड डी एंड सूर्य आराम में अल्लाह सेज दो स्केल्स आर हैवी are the successful ones रिमेंबर वी डन मेनी स्टेटमेंट अपटिल नाउ वॉट वॉट हाउ डू डिफाइन सक्सेस so one other definition of success i'm giving you today is one whose scales are heavy is the one who is who is successful and this is surah araf ayat number 8 if anyone wants to go uh, through that um how did i know that how where is my um, uh, backing that i said that you will be asked about every neema in surah takasur allah says that wala tus alunna yawma izin anin naim that on that day you will be questioned about all your blessings right surah takasur mein so um it is impossible that we thank allah for everything that he has blessed us but at least we can try at least we can uh, consciously be in that state of mind and we can try to be uh, thanking allah the i forgot this we were doing the prophets as examples um let's i just want to quickly go through this sabse jo the most interesting is hazrat sulaiman alaihi salam we know that he was the biggest prophet and the king and aksar unne gharon ke bahar kya likha hua dekha hota hai what's written outside the house nice big house someone builds hazam and fadli rabi what does it mean for the favor of allah but they forgot the tag line do you know the tag line after that that he said these words that liyabluwani ashkur am akfur so that allah tests me whether i am thankful or i am doing kufr this is the line that follows in surah saad but people forget the tag line and they just focus on the blessing not focusing that you were given this blessing because now you will be tested what are you doing with that blessing right so this is also something that i thought uh, you know is something food for thought that we really need to think that whatever blessing allah has given us and allah has given bless people with different blessings not everyone has the same right someone 
might be amazing at tajweed, someone is good in tafsir, someone is good in hibs, someone has a greater understanding of hadith, someone has a greater uh, fahim, uh, some people are great at speaking, some people are great at memorizing. So in deen and dunya, I'm just focusing on deen, that people are blessed with different blessings. So we need to see how are we thanking Allah. And I gave you a formula of how to be thankful. Does, does anyone remember? Easy one word formula. What was it? What does, what does gratitude mean? When we say gratitude, if you were to express gratitude, one word, what is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one word. But how do you, like, what is equals to? Please. Hmm? Mindfully. Mindfully, yes. Parma Bardari was obedience. Okay. That's how you show it, right? That's just one thing. So whatever that you whatever that you bring blessed with, just be obedient to Allah. And that is actually it's like saying, Mama, I love you, Mama, I love you, Mama, I love you. I'm so thankful you're the best mom in the world. Son, please can you get me a glass of water? No, I'm tired. I really can't. Can you just do this? No, I'm very busy. So that's just words, fancy words. If you're not obedient and if you're not doing what uh, your mother loves or you're not pleasing her in any way you're just using fancy words and we all know that words with no action really don't mean anything for any of us so we need to do that when we are uh, showing Allah our love right is it obvious from our actions or not prophet Ibrahim uh, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has praised him and said, Shakir ali anumi, that he was thankful to Allah for what Allah has blessed, had blessed him. What did Allah bless him with? He was tested with his wife. He was tested with his son. He was tested with his father. He was thrown into the fire. His own father hated him. He was abandoned. He was kicked out of his own village, his own uh, people. Uh, he left his only darling son of old age. He was told to slaughter him. But he was thankful to Allah because he saw all the blessings in whatever test that came his way. Right? And what does Allah say about him? That because of that, he was, and it, this says in Surah Nahal, that he was grateful to his bounties. So he, Allah, chose him and led him to the straight path. Remember the first lesson that we did of Surah Dahar, that people who are jo, who have people who realize their nyama of their life and the hidayah, then Allah guides them. But people who are in denial of the first two, they are not led to the straight path. So you have to be in a state of gratitude to even be led to the straight path. Because you have to ask, we ask for it, right? So if Allah knows, if you are in a state of gratitude, then Allah will guide you to the straight path. This is a lesson that I uh, took uh, from this. What about Prophet uh, Dawood alayhi salam? Prophet Dawood alayhi salam, Allah was told by him that, O oh, people of Dawood, that you do work and you thank Allah. And very few of my slaves are thankful. So again, this was an advice given by Allah to the people of Dawood. What about the beautiful story of Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam? Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam ki jo um, thankfulness hai, he remembered Allah's favors on him when he was made the wazir of Egypt. But what did he say? He said, I thank Allah for what he has, that he bought my father back to me. He did not say my father that I had lost as a child. I was thrown in the well. I was the most good looking prophet, but I spent my entire life in a dungeon and my own brothers beat me up. But he, he thanked Allah for having found his father. Then he said that, and I thank Allah for my brothers. And he blamed the shaitan to have caused discord between them. So look at his positive mindset. That everything that was happening, he was, he was his, he had a positive mindset to it. He was thanking Allah. And then in the next ayah, he talks and mentions about Allah's favors on him. He said, I thank Allah for he has given me the power and I can interpret dreams. And then he asked Allah that, um, let me die in true devotion and join me with the righteous. This is one of the etiquettes of duas that I thought. That when you are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can actually uh, think about some of the favors that you are blessed with 
And then you ask Allah for more favors. Remember, Surah Ibrahim, that if you thank Allah, Allah will give you more. So when we are doing dua and we are asking and we are remembering Allah's favors on us, we are we are already we have already put ourselves in a positive mindset. We are already in the mode of gratitude. And Allah loves us. We gain Allah's pleasure. And Allah is happy to bestow us with more of his bounties. Now, there is one way of saying that, you know, Allah, look at me. Uh, you have, you know, I don't have this. I what you have never given me this. At least uh, you can give me this. At least I can have that because I didn't get that, you know. So I need your I need your favors here because I've been asking for this for the past 10 years and I didn't get it. So now can you please give it to me? So please your rub. You can do that too. But if you want to please your rub, then we follow the example of Surah um, uh, Prophet Yusuf that we remind ourselves. Allah knows. He is Samin. He knows everything. But we are reminding ourselves of Allah's favors on us and then we are asking. Right? So we are actually putting ourselves also in a positive mindset, in a state of gratitude before we are asking Allah uh, for something. So um, I wanted to finish these two, but I have this video that I want to share. And I'm hoping that I can start this. Uh, I hope this starts. Um, yeah. Bia, do you, how do I play this? Okay, I want you to watch this. By now, I thought he should give up. So... This video is a very simple um, explanation of many things that we might interpret it as, but how I, and people, different people use it for different, whatever they're going through with their internal reality or whatever it is. This is uh, for me, uh, and I wanted to share this, the, the taskia that we do, the struggles that we go through are exactly like this. You see, we are just, we think we have it and we're right there and there is a, just a fall, right? Then we again, we keep trying, but the lesson is you keep trying and you keep trying and you keep trying, inshallah, one day when we meet our Lord, which is going to be the pinnacle of the height that he wanted to reach, the goal that he wanted to reach, we will be able to reach it. And and this and this is a lesson. Well, my son said, Mom, what is this? This is a man falling off a trampoline again and again. He was just joking with me. But you see, this is, this is just a... Uh, Listen about resilience, about never giving up. Whatever your struggles, you never, ever give up because a moment is never hopeless. Remember our first lessons from our first class. Who was hopeless? Shaitan. We don't, we, do, we, are, we are not following his footsteps. We never, ever give up. This was just something showed in like a few seconds. This is our entire life and it's not easy. Remember we talked about below the line, whenever you feel your ship is sinking and you've actually sunk, you have to rise up. You have to get up again. And this gratitude and all these tools come together and they help you bring you back on track. 
you know, these stairs, whatever it is, wherever you want to reach, they, these are the tools that will help you. You know, it's like, you, this is the seed, you know, that you plant that will give you, that will give that tree of Iman that you will build. And all the things that we talked about, the happiness and the contentment. And remember the, the first lesson we did that plant? Mm -hmm. yes. So the, the fruits and the trees uh, and the leaves and everything that comes out will be um, uh, actually actually the fruit of whatever you aapne so kiya tha, which will be the seed of gratitude, right? So this, so to become that beautiful tree of Iman and bearing the fruit of content and happiness, you have to have the strong seeds. And I just feel, this is my own interpretation that I just feel that gratitude and all the things that we will do will be the seeds that will give you the foundations to become the beautiful plant that we want to be. Does the tree ever say that, oh, many are, uh, you know, you threw a stone and be like, oh, you did this and now I'm not going to give you shade. No, no matter what, what treatment, the tree is there strong and sturdy. It's there to support you. And that's what we need to become. But we need these seeds to become that tree. All right. So I hope that was, it's just food for thought was the reason that I just wanted to share this. Um, I have about uh, three minutes. Uh, we have Yumna Shahzad saying he's falling but coming up with more power. Yes, that is a good observation. It's an attitude. Very well. Well said. Um, are there any other questions? We will see those who are not blessed with what we have. Okay. Um, are there any questions? With the Yes. Yes. Yes, that's a good observation. She's saying that he fell many times, but Alhamdulillah, and then he was able to reach his destination because of resilience. You can also take it as your life paths you take. Yes. No. Every day, you know, every minute Shaitan is attacking you. Yes. So, you know, when he attacks, you fall and then with your willpower, exactly. you come back again and you try to keep on the same path and you keep on trying, keep on falling. So, this is basically our whole day, 24 hours. Our whole life. Day, our whole life. Where do you get the willpower from then? From Allah. You have to ask. Yes. You know, and by attending these classes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Any other observations or questions? Yes. The class mentioned how the job keeps on falling. Do you know every fall gets to go higher? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Every push in our life. Every I miss that part. Very good. Yeah. He gets higher because you remember we talked about the spiritual muscle. He builds a spiritual muscle. But just the experience they to attain your maximum. So much needed. Alhamdulillah. So that is why Allah tests you, right? To build that spiritual muscle, to build, bring out that sabr in you, to teach you lessons. Yes, a stronger version of you comes out, a finer version of you comes out. The test. After, After falling, every time you fall, yeah, yeah. yes. Oh, yeah. So it is uh, in other way better for us uh, to go with the world, to go with shaitan and all that. Right. Alhamdulillah. So uh, this is a, a think about this and do share it. Uh, do you want me to share this video on the WhatsApp so you can share it with other people? It's quite interesting and just see what, how people, different people interpret it is also very interesting. Subhanakallah wa bihamdi ka shadu ala ila ila anta astaghfiruka wa tubu laik astaghfiruka wa tubu laik astaghfiruka wa tubu laik assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.